Hello, this is Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics here, and uh, today we're going to do a video that people have been asking for, and that's how to install our uh, braided stainless line on the rear shock absorber remote preload adjuster. So um, this is an accessory, an upgrade accessory. It's one that doesn't make any huge significant improvement in the way the motorcycle functions. Uh, it's just one that makes the motorcycle optimum and as good as it can be. Um, for pre-2000, for the previous generation Goldwing 2001 to 17, um, particularly prior to 2010, the uh, stock adjuster assembly had a significant amount of air in it. Um, uh, there's an adjuster by your left knee that lets you add or remove rear spring preload from the rear shock absorber. Uh, it reads on a scale on your dash from 0 to 25. Uh, <clears throat> So the, no, the infamous problem was you would push on their button and you, the bike wouldn't change until somewhere around 10 or 11 on the scale instead of starting moving right at 1. So the pieces of the system are your rear shock absorber and then this is an electronically driven hydraulic pump. So this is a motor with a worm drive gear and it pushes in this cup of oil on a piston. So there's a piston in the cup of oil the motor pushes down on the piston. The piston forces oil down the hydraulic line to the top of the shock spring, and at which point it drives a slave cylinder out and puts more or less pressure on the spring. So this is a spring preload adjuster. It is not a ride height adjuster. It's a misnomer to do that, and people on the internet like to have an argument about that, but they literally don't know what they're talking about, so feel free to just ignore them. This adds preload to the spring. By default, it may change the ride height of the, of the bike by adding spring pressure. But once the shock is topped out, it will add more pressure and the ride height won't change. The way you change ride height is not available on a Honda Goldwing. It would be to uh, lengthen or shorten the clevis so you're changing the eye-to-eye -eye length of the shock without changing the preload on the spring. So there's kind of some information. All you're doing is changing preload on the spring. No effect on damping on, with this system on any Honda Goldwing, new or old, okay? So now that we have that straight. So <clears throat> the bike comes with a, a soft rubber line. And uh, so in the application of a shock absorber, it's very much like a brake system. So where lots of sport bike riders will add a braided stainless line to get better feel out of, the, uh, out of their brake system, in the application of a shock, once the slave cylinder leaves its pocket that it's in and it's sitting on oil and it's no longer bottomed out, uh, as the shock cycles, the spring is putting pressure on that piston in the cup of oil and it's cycling the rubber hose millions of times. Uh, this is an insignificant thing that you're not likely to feel while you're riding, but it's just something that as suspension specialists, we like to optimize while we have your shock off of your bike and this system has air trapped in it anyway, we go ahead and put an optimal brake line on it, uh, it or our high stainless steel braided line. It's $50, and since we're doing, we're, we're bleeding the adjuster and putting clean fluid in it anyway, uh, we figure that's a worthwhile upgrade. It lasts the life of the bike, and uh, you will never give you any trouble. So we're gonna show you how to install that. So <clears throat> removing the shock from the bike, when you get it out, of course, it's not gonna look like this. It will be extremely dirty, okay? So on the Goldwing, there's no way for the owner to clean the shock. It's buried in the bike. So when you take it out, this thing might look completely like it's got a fur coat on it. So uh, it'll take some time to clean the shock and uh, you, you, know, you may need lots of uh, solvent or cleaner to do that. Um, how you do that is kind of up to you. Uh, we, you know, take your time, brushes. Uh, we use a product from Zep. It says brake cleaner, but this is actually like electrical contact cleaner. So unlike a brake cleaner, it's uh, uh, got no odor, leaves no residue, evaporates instantly. Um, electrical contact cleaner would be, if you can't find it in your automotive store, electrical contact cleaner is a better alternative. So it'll clean the part clean, leave no residue, and not damage any of the components. Uh, so you want to get it as clean as possible. We have another video we showed you um, how to remove the shock spring using uh, the tool you can purchase from us for $45. goes on, you compress the spring, you remove a wire clip and, uh, and take that off 
uh, one key thing to note, there's a tiny set screw that needs to be loosened when you do that. We've shown this in another video. Remove the set screw, compress the, the uh, collar, remove the ring, spring comes off. So then you're gonna have the adjuster assembly effectively looking much like this in your, in your hand, okay? So once you get it apart, you may have further cleaning to do. Uh, and that's, so that's important. Now before we do anything, it's very important on the pump motor, right? Take a pointed object, a pick, and scratch a line into the housing to denote the clocking of the line. You have to put it back exactly where it came from. I, the first inclination is gonna say, hey, why don't I use a marker? Well, if you put a marker there, as soon as you spray any cleaner on it, the marker goes away and now you've lost your mark. So be sure not to do that. Actually scratch the surface and that will make sure that you get it right. Uh, we don't do that here because uh, our technicians just know where everything's supposed to go. On uh, pre-2001, or 17, 2001 to 2017 bikes, um, this hose angles up slightly. Uh, you'll see on the 2018, it sits horizontally, just in line. So that's one subtle difference there. Um, and, but just make sure you scratch that so that you put it back where it came from. So from here, we're gonna break one apart and show you how to change the line and bleed it real quick. So. We're going to work with our lead technician here at Traction Dynamics, Martin, who will kind of walk us through the process and, and show us what he does um, in, while he's doing this. You come in there. I'm going to slide by. So tell us why you're removing that pump there, Martin. Uh, to reset the plunger, zero basically, okay. zero everything out. All right. So three Phillips screws there. What's happening is he's pulling a plunger down in the cup of oil up to zero. Um, you can also help this before you take your bike apart by setting it down to zero on a 2001 to 17, or you can on a 2018 model bike set it to one rider, no luggage, and that's effectively zero on the old bike. Same same setting at that point. Watch out for the little o-ring around here. Make sure it's in position. You don't want to pinch that and break it. It's a seal. All right. All right, so we've zeroed the pump motor out at this point. Now we're going to remove the motor from the uh, pump reservoir. There's another O-ring that has to stay in place, so make sure that's that's in position. Yep. Double check that when we reassemble. So you can set the electric motor to the side. Now I like to clean that out. Over time, the oil can seep past that piston and up into the reservoir. Some, so just it's best to start with it clean. Uh, we're using a little battery impact there for convenience, but uh, as long as you have a bench vise, you can just hold it by one of the mounting tabs and use a common hand wrench um, uh, if, you, if, you have, if you don't have a little battery impact. Clean the mating surface. Let's 
So there, there we use just a little rubber tip on any little common compressor. You could be, it could be anything, uh, a little pancake. Then we don't need any fancy form of just a little basic air pressure to pop the cylinder out. Usually it'll be a lot dirtier. This is brand new. You know, that's so this unit's off of a 2018 Honda Goldwing, so it's it basically brand new. Mm -hmm. I'll use a light grease on the O rings. There's an inner and an outer as it slides, seal as it slides on the surf, two surfaces it, it moves against. There is a nice supplied chamfer on it so that it won't damage the O-ring as you put it on on the sleeve that it slides on. clean. Uh, copper crush washers work fine. You can reuse them and they last indefinitely. There's no issue with that. Invariably we'll uh, get some sort of a comment from some airplane mechanic that says you're a terrible person for reusing the crush washer. No we're not. Only temporarily I'll tighten that since it's going to be loosened up again. Use a hand loaded screwdriver. Push the oil out. Take your time. So we're forcing the remaining oil that was in the piston in the reservoir up through the line and into the slave cylinder. Um, you can pretty much use any form of hydraulic fluid into the reservoir here. Uh, it's not particular. <clears throat> it's not uh, viscosity or weight specific because this isn't a damping unit, it's just a hydraulic unit. So we got a bucket under there to keep, to keep the mess to a minimum. You could use a cookie sheet or whatever um, you, you may have. <clears throat> About a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Three mm. eighths. <clears throat> so uh, you may you'll need to find something you know that you can fashion at home cup. Uh, or something, a gl glass you have in your cat, you know, just a yeah, You can do it by, by hand. We just you can do it by hand. Convenient. We just have to have something that's the same size. But <clears throat> let's, um, if that's your thing, let's give people who are precision here some number. Um, there's about eight millimeters sticking up there, so five sixteenths of an inch, something like that. <clears throat> Just a simple word of warning, there's three bolts that hold that uh, electric motor onto the pump reservoir. The two lower bolts are long and have lots of threads. The upper bolt is long 
but it only for some reason has three or four threads from Honda. We just by nature of good mechanicing skills always thread the longer bolts in first um, <clears throat> to grab that and do the long one with that only has a couple of threads last. <clears throat> I was just going to push until it stops moving. So basically he's just displaced the piston up against the plunger inside of the pump housing. So now it's seated there where Probably it goes. Probably too much oil in there, <clears throat> so we just going to bleed the excess oil out. So the excess oil that the piston is sticking up, you're just going to crack the line open, push it down, and you push it down until the, the uh, slave so slave donut bottoms out in the adjuster. Last step is he's setting the clocking right now to be precise on the hose. <clears throat> so 2018 and pop. One more step you gotta do. Alright, so new this applies to 2018 Honda Goldwings only, not 2017 and older. <clears throat> One more step. By the way, I have a video on this very early on. Uh, not on this topic. Um, okay, so you rotate that, show that again, where it was and what we're doing. This is the, the crank that pushes down on the piston. Okay. We remember in the first step of when we started today, hang on a second, when we started today, we, we pulled this bell crank all the way up so everything is fully zeroed out and seated. At this point, on a 2018, go ahead, Martin, we're going to run it down two rotations. Okay? <clears throat> um, the uh, 2018 bike is looking for that um, piston and plunger to be in a spe specific location for this sensor. This is the sensor that senses where the... Uh, um, tells you whether your bike is a one person, one person with luggage, two people, or two people with luggage, your icon on your dashboard. Or on your older model bike, it shows you the zero to 25 on your dashboard. So that's what that sensor on the side is doing there. On the other bike, it doesn't matter. It will find where it needs to go as soon as you put power to it. On the 2018, if it's not where, right in this range, the bike won't be able to find it. Um, <clears throat> your symptom that the bike, that something's wrong, is your uh, icon will flash and won't stop flashing ever. So that's, if you ever have that symptom, that means that that uh, bell crank isn't in the right spot. I'll just take it oil wall. Now he's, yeah, so it's, the job is done here. Now we're doing a final cleaning so that there's no residue or oil on the bike to catch or trap dirt. Um, <clears throat> the reason I was, I'm uh, telling you about that just the, the one single step difference between the 2001 to 17 and the 2018 model procedure is the parts are absolutely the same. Nothing changed. Uh, and then next common problem is people will somehow <clears throat> manage to flip this around. I don't know why, don't ask me, but make sure this goes on the right way. It should be like a cup. <clears throat> and the spacer That's goes it. in. And now this is fully ready to assemble onto a shock. Um, so when I say these are the same parts, I mean these are the same parts. So, and one of the funny things is on a 2018 Honda Goldwing, Honda didn't bother respecifying this to have an appropriate length wiring harness on it. So they literally just folded the wire up and put a piece of electrical tape on it. So this is one from a 2001 to 17. Yeah. The only modification you need to make to put it on the 2018 is you bend the wire th three times and put a piece of electrical tape on it, and now you have your whole new updated system for your 2018 bike. So um, <clears throat> there is a subtle difference in our hose between 17 and 18, so we color coded them. The one seven to 2017 and preceding is black. This one has a smoky colored liner on it. That's just so we visually make sure that the shock has the right hose on it. So 
Um, and then one little final important touch is clocking of the actual reservoir slave cylinder onto the shock. So for 2001 to 2017, I can show you <clears throat> where it is. Um, all right, so we're looking for that to be the same as stock. So if you see that image there, you want to duplicate this clocking, all right, before you tighten the set screw. So that's that's an important thing to, to do before you set the set screw. Uh, 2001 to 18, uh, we clock it slightly different from stock just to make sure make our hose lay exactly how we want. So I'm going to show you. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's basically 90 degree between the plumber surface. It's basically 90 plumber. degrees. So you know, just kind of show you what it looks like. So bolt hole, this you know, 90 degrees bolt going out 90 degrees in relation to the clevis. So uh, within a few degrees, it's it's okay. It doesn't matter. You just don't want it. You don't want to miss by a, a significant amount. Um, it doesn't affect its function, but you'll notice your hose doesn't lay right if you haven't if you forget this step or mess it up. So uh, uh, while you're assembling, you'll know you've made an error. So <clears throat> all right, that's it for this lesson. If you have any questions, you can uh, reach me as usual, maxattraction.com, and uh, Please tell your friends about my channel. Uh, there'll be lots more videos like this coming. And don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the subscribe button. And then you'll get a little bell that I've put up something new and interesting for you to check out. Thanks a lot.